All right, so last I left off, I was just getting the firmware set up on this thing ahead of time. Uh, once we have the software set up, we can go ahead and proceed with the hardware set up. And uh, as you can see, my DS doesn't have a working top screen, which is actually ideal because we're going to be turning it into a macro. But unfortunately, it, as you saw, it made the setup a little bit more difficult because some of the software runs on the top screen. But it's mostly automated, so you just got to give it some time. But for reference, here are two DS lights running Pokemon Platinum. Uh, one of them has the firmware already set up and the other does not. You might notice that one of them has a working top screen. Hardware wise, both of these consoles have perfectly working top screens. The only difference is this one has the software for the, um, uh, the, the NDS, the TV out functionality enabled. So the reason the screen does that, by the way, this is why I made sure to make a backup. Uh, you can just install the Flash Me again over the software if you have a patched console and you want to remove the TV out so that you can use your top screen again. Just install that over or restore the backup that you took. Um, but the reason the TV or the top screen gets corrupt in the first place is because some of the controls that the um, system on a chip, the DS Lite SoC, some of the controls that that is using are tied up with LCD data. So you have to commandeer some of those lines for that. So realistically, the top screen just isn't getting all of the data that it's expecting, and that's why the display looks the way it does. Anyway, let's go ahead and get on with the install here. I have the NDS TV 3.45 kit. This is from Rotronics. I will go ahead and throw a link down in the description you guys want to check it out um, they did send it my way to, to play with here so I'm not totally impartial but you know full disclosure and all okay so here is what we get there's not a whole lot in the bag you get a super long cable that we will use momentarily you get some resistors and some capacitors that are very helpfully labeled, and then the board itself that we will be soldering down. There's quite a bit to solder here. Um, it's pretty small, but it's pretty neat how it works. All of the TV encoding functionality is built into the DS Lite itself, but you do still need a little bit of electronics on the output to generate a composite signal um, that TV will be happy with. Uh, I believe you also need to do a little bit of messing with the, um, oh, excuse me, with the audio. I'm not 100% sure exactly what this is doing, but if you check out the GitHub from the uh, Preserving NDS History or NDS TV, I'll, I'll link it in the description, but that GitHub documents exactly how this board works. This is the exact same as the other board, except that it has a couple of extra features built in, um, but as far as taking the TV out signal, which is what we'll use this cable for, uh, this works the same way. The, the extra features are uh, that we don't have to have dedicated buttons. We can actually use button combos on the DS Lite. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop this open. It is absolutely disgusting. So once I get the DS freed from this prison, then, uh, We'll go ahead and continue. Um, two little rubber things need to come out. These two screw holes, just pop them out with a spudger. Easy peasy. Uh, battery cover is a um, crosshead screw, specifically a JIS screw. I'm using a J00 bit. Of course, you'd already, already have that off anyway if your console's already flashed. Uh, there's a crosshead screw there. Crosshead screw here, and they're all different, of course. Try and keep those organized. Um, and there's another crosshead screw there, but we don't have to take that one out yet. Next, I'm switching over to the Y0 bit to get that out that out, 
that. And one more in the cart slot. Again, all different. We don't even have the back off and we already have one, two, three, four different types of screws. Uh, but once that's off, the back does lift off, uh, except that there are some clips along the front here. Uh, it comes off much easier if you release those first and then you can just lift this off. Um, some shells have some gunk holding it on. This one did. I have already had this apart. When I pulled this DS out of my parts bin, I noticed that the water damage indicator was tripped, so I took it apart to inspect it ahead of time, just in case. But I think we're good. Uh, everything checked out, including the onboard indicator. Uh, I did have to clean it up a little bit. It's no big deal. Anyway, now that we have the back off, you can see the pads we were messing with earlier. This is the SL1 contact. Uh, if you want to, there is no reason why you can't just pop the back off put a solder ball on those contacts to short them out. Then you don't have to hold, you know, you don't have to sit there holding it with the tweezers, shorten out those two pads and stress about it. Um, just when you're done flashing everything, make sure to remove the solder ball. And because this part of the PCB is over the screen, you'll want to remove the PCB when you're soldering so you don't ruin the screen. But other than that, there you go, and there is that potentiometer that is right next to the pad that if you short your tweezers on, as in any one of these two pads to the metal of this potentiometer, it will put voltage in a place where the system is not expecting it, and it will trigger a safety shutdown. Granted, if you're shorting that out, you're probably flashing the BIOS, so there's nothing safe about shutting down at that point. But luckily, flash me it's pretty hard to pretty hard to actually permanently break your device, especially since um, you can order pre-flashed replacement wireless cards. Uh, this was actually included by Rotronics with with the um, TV out kit here, and what this is this is just the Wi-Fi chip for the DS, but it's already flashed over so if we pop that in pop a battery in here it can boot it up it should drop me right into the system maybe no I don't have a card in and I had the battery out so never mind um, but yeah that that should come pre-flashed um, if you ordered a pre-flashed one, now is the time to swap it in. If you went ahead and flashed your existing firmware, then you can go ahead and leave that installed and you don't need one of these. I think the price is pretty reasonable for what you get, but in my personal opinion, it is pretty easy to flash once you get all, once you got all the software checked down. Anyway, enough rambling. So what we need to do once we've got this disassembled, um, as usual, now is the time to do any cleaning. We will go ahead and remove the antenna for the wireless and the microphone connector. We will pull the antenna out from underneath the cart slot because of course Nintendo routed it in the most convenient place. We're not reusing either of these, so I suppose there's no reason you can't cut it. I like saving spare parts though. All right. Once that is pulled out, we've got those two screws out right there and there. Can flip this up and disconnect. this screen here. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull out these buttons and then we are totally done with this part. Ooh, I might pause and clean these. I don't know if I'll have time. All right. 
was out of there. Oh, there was some water damage. Look at that. Interesting. The board itself is plenty clean. I don't notice any real issues. All right, so let us get on with the board prep because we still need to install the TV out kit. So I am going to pull off the Wi-Fi module for now. We will need to reinstall it, but I need to remove the screen for now. And it's much easier to get this bail undone with the Wi-Fi module not there. Got the touch screen disconnected, now the LCD itself. And it pops right out of there. And I'll set that aside. We'll need that later. All right, so now that we have our bare motherboard, I'm just gonna take a minute to give it a once over, make sure I didn't miss any of the water damage. Highly recommend doing the same thing on your end too, even if your board doesn't have any water damage. It's always good to uh, evaluate ahead of time. All right, so we've got that torn down. And yep, that's all we need to do. Okay, so the first few steps looks like trimming the uh, housing itself for install. We'll save that for later. I'm gonna jump right into the electronics here. And our first steps, bring that in a little, are going to be to remove this ferrite bead and this ferrite bead. We will leave the third one in place. We just want to remove that one and that one. Oh, what the hell? Oh, there we go. My iron was trapped. All right, so easiest way to pull these off is going to be hit both sides and then just lift like that. I will save these because they're useful. Good components. All right, once those are off, now we need to cut a couple traces. This top pad connects up to this test pad right here, and this top pad connects up to that test pad, and so on for the third one, but we're just using these two. And we need to separate it so that they're no longer connected. I grab my multimeter here because we will want to double check. Set that to uh, continuity mode. So it beeps. You see, top pad and top pad. So we want to cut those, and I'm going to leave the multimeter out, double check it. And I am just going to go to town with this knife here. Oops, slipped a little. That's no problem. Because we are quite literally cutting traces. So if I accidentally cut the trace, well then I've succeeded. So when cutting traces, I like to make two separate cuts about a millimeter away from each other, and then I'll come back and remove the material between them, but I'll see that one's still intact, but that one's cut.
which is terrified of slipping. Try going this way. You gotta be especially careful because these are six layer boards, I think. So if you cut too deep, you can cut into power, but there we go. We are good. All right, with those two cut, tin those two pads, and then we install so they included resistors, 75 ohms here. So let me double check the instructions here. Wanted to make sure I wasn't skipping any steps. Pretty clever how they do this. All right, and now, oh, I meant to touch that up, I forgot. All right, and now we need to take a little bit of wire and bridge both of those. We need to bridge three pads together. So I need to bridge the bottom pad of this resistor right here to the bottom pad right here to that pad right there. go through my wire drawer here, find some of the old solid core I have, it's this blue stuff, yeah. Of course that's going to make a mess, let's do that over here. So the reason I wanted this stuff is it's really easy to work with for this particular use. So I want this 24 gauge wire. It's a bit thick, but it'll work. So what we're going to do is I'm going to solder Actually, even better idea. Take that, bend it like that, and I can just come in. Yeah, easy peasy. I'll even tin it first. Actually, that might work. <laughs> All right, there we go. Don't even need to use wire. They're close enough together that you can just bridge that. That was totally an accident too. All right, next step. 
Okay, it's it's worded weird, but it makes more sense in the pictures if you're if you're following along the same guide I am. Uh, by the time you watch this video, it might be a totally different guide, but um, they're saying you need to solder all these points: uh, left trigger, right trigger, up, down, and select. Select is the only one that has to be soldered with a capacitor, um, but you also have to solder the battery plus and minus pins if you're using. A speaker which I will be but we haven't installed it yet all right so let us go ahead and start on PO2 right here because that one does require a capacitor Solder joints are just coming out like crap. It's because you're not using enough flux. Okay. Let's get some wire to install here. Because we need PO9 up here. Come on. Pick the wrong soldering iron. That PO9, PO6. PO7 There we go BT plus and minus And PO2. Oh, and up here, PO8. Okay. So we need one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven wires. Yeah, okay. Went and grabbed some 30 gauge Kynar wire. Hopefully this will be enough. It's not a whole lot of wiring going on, but wires do need to be sufficiently long because this is going to come up over and down here. So that should be long enough. All right. So I will probably captain tape all of these wires down just as a little bit of strain relief, but I don't think I'm going to do it just yet. Just because it'll make it harder to keep these in order. Actually, nah, it should be fine. Alright. 
And that one's just too close to the edge. Not a whole lot I can do about that. Okay. Got those soldered in. To route all the cables back through this area. So we're going to be adding that in right about there. It's nicely labeled on the bottom there. All All right, so there we go. Got them all soldered in there. We want the final arrangement to be basically that. I cut them all a little bit long, but I'll be able to pick up the slack. need to solder a couple extra wires, two for my speaker wires, um, and then two for the ground and the video out. Bear with me just a moment. Right. Okay, so I think I got all the wiring in now. I used a little bit thicker wire for these two. Um, this is going to be my speaker wire. This is going to be for the actual video out. These don't have to go far, but I made it long so I can still maneuver it. These do have to go far. Anyway, um, on the board, it's labeled what the point is. Uh, so a lot of these, like select, left, down, up, um, that's not quite what it's labeled on the board. Um, so if we flip the board over, you see I soldered to P09, which is left, P06, up, P07, down, battery minus, battery plus, P02, select, and I believe that's P08, which is right. Just have to match those up with the battery. There is a diagram in the Rotronics instructions. 
otherwise, I think we're just about done. Separate those out. Because we want to put... There we go. We want to put a little bit of cap done on the bottom here as insulation. Just in case. Because some of these joints are a little bit tall. That's inconvenient. No, it's not. So with all the wires attached, I can start tucking everything away. Uh, it doesn't matter that I'm covering up this connector here because that's just for the microphone. I won't be hooking that back up. I'll have to pop this off to get the um, touchscreen connector back on, but as you can see, the motherboard is designed to just kind of wedge in there nice and tight. Uh, I have these two wires here for connecting up the ground and the composite video signal. We'll do that later, but do take heed that uh, the ground is on the right here and it's supposed to go on the left, and then the uh, video signal goes on the right here, or vice versa, something like that. Um, but that inside one is a ground, just keep that in mind. Um, otherwise, let's go ahead and continue getting this stuff routed. Next, we're going to need this ribbon cable here. Let me just double check. Yeah, pins down. do some uh, weird origami here. Bend that down, up and over. And give it 90 degrees like that. Probably would have made more sense to go under, but once the cable's creased, there's only so much you can do. Cross just like that. See, I told you it'd be interesting. At the very least, I'm going to need to tape this side down. Yeah, that'll be fine to stay like that. Take it too long. Uh, 
Oh dear. All that manipulating that came out. I almost wonder if it's worth like a dab of hot glue to hold that down. They're good enough now. YouTube is okay. Now we gotta kind of coil up. Probably easier if this is plugged in first. Nice to be able to go on top, but it doesn't quite fit. Luckily, we can be somewhat rough with this cable. It is delicate, but not that delicate. It's tight. It'll fit. That's what we want. All right, now I need to. Ah, oh, shoot, my wires were supposed to go under that. I wonder if I can still feed them through. Tight fit, but man, I think we're good now. All right, so I think that should be it for the preparations. Now we just gotta assemble the Jesus thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in this shell. 
maybe if I can get it apart. There we go. I had it set aside for reshelling another DS light, but then didn't need that. I believe we have to cut out the entire battery compartment, but all right. Probably have to remove this stuff too. Surprisingly close. It looks like we still have to do some trimming. Okay, I figured as much. It looks like we just have to remove this area. He's just saying hi. They want us to remove a good portion of this too. Looks like from here up. There we go, now it's sitting nice and flush. All right, so yeah, definitely a good idea to cut some uh, clearance for this ribbon cable. Problem is getting it to clear the shoulder button. Mm, maybe that's enough. I think that should work. Alright, I'm gonna screw this down. screws are the motherboard screws. Oh, that's terrifying lifting that cable out of there to get this screw in. that screw is pretty important to the button feel though. Oh, 
Let's go. Mm, it's a little long. That could be a problem. Oh, one thing. That's it. That's it. There we go. There we go. Alright, I need a little Just a matter of swing plastic, we go through. Just like that. We'll just hold this thing one day. Hang on, we'll just keep doing the exact same activity. There's Let's move here. And we are about ready to try this thing out. Let me add a speaker. Because the one I had planned isn't going to fit, so I'm just going to dangle this off the top for now. Ah, oh, nuts. I hate when that happens. I haven't messed around with DS's in so long. I totally forgot to uh, make sure the power slider is lined up with the actual button. That is plenty loud. All right. Yeah, I'm not going to bother with the rest of this. I the the battery's coming out. There's no chance the battery's not coming out. There's not even a uh, square nut for the battery door, which I'll have to remove the battery to fix that. So, all right, let us see how this works. So that's good. Let's pop in. We should play a DS game, huh? That sounds like a DS game.
game but you can't play Pokemon not with one screen not unless you can trigger up select nope uh oh Button combos aren't working. That's concerning. Let's see if video out works at the very least. So luckily, this just uses a uh, two and a half millimeter, three and a half millimeter. Excuse me, three and a half millimeter to. Uh, AV there, RCA, and unfortunately, I'm not getting anything solid on the output here. Let's double check that. Hey, that's better. That we want to get out of that. Input composite. There we go. Problem, I think, was the wrong input, but hey, what do you know? Notice the sound is automatically going over the capture card, too, which now that I realize it might be coming out multiple sources there. That's another capture's working, but there we go, look at that. Let's try swapping again. It was select up left trigger. I'm concerned that my left trigger just straight up doesn't work. Oh, good lord. Yeah. L just straight up doesn't even work. So that's why none of my button combos are working. Working. It's kind of frustrating. Let's try. Is that not? That's not my game. Hang on. stuff everywhere. I'm going to plug in Easy Flash here. I don't have any shoulder buttons whatsoever. Uh, okay, well, let me go try and fix that. I'll be right back. All right, I think I got it. I've got that one working now and that one. So we're going to get out of that. We're going to go into the flash cart here. Fire up platinum. Get my top screen back. Let's 
seems to work nicely. This is actually a really cool setup. I'm, I'm digging this quite a bit. Uh, oh, that's on the bottom screen here. Let's try. Uh, what is that? L up select. Nope. I'm not getting anything on the buttons still. Oh, that's because my... Oh. That's so weird. Oh, I'm not getting anything because L's not working. Wait. Good lord. There we go. I just wasn't hitting the button hard enough. <laughs> so that is a problem with my DS. Uh, a problem specifically with my L button. I really should have taken the time to clean these while it was apart, but I didn't think to do that. You can also do down L select, and that should enable picture in picture. Oh yeah, there we go. Capacity. Ugh. Yeah, I don't think that's happening. I can't get the button to trigger now. I have to replace that tactile switch. But I can change. The opacity just fine. I'm just gonna have a hard time getting the uh, screens to swap again. But that's a problem with my uh, my DS itself. That's nothing to do with the kit. Um, I'll probably have to pull this apart and replace that pretty soon. But this probably isn't the last you guys have seen of this thing. I still need to get a speaker that'll fit in there. And hell, even if I had to play like this, that's still pretty darn cool. There you go. That's so cool. So I, it takes a bit of getting used to, but L up is, L up and select is screen swap, L down and select is picture in picture mode, and then L up and, or LR, Christ, R up and select should be changing opacity, but I don't know if that's something we can change opacity on. That or the button stuff. Nope, it was the button. There you go. That's super cool. Uh, one of the downsides to this method, of course, is that you now no longer have uh, stereo sound, you only have mono, because this is just tip ring sleeve. There is no tool channel. You have tip ring sleeve, so ground, left audio channel, video. That's it. Um, this also means if you wanted to use headphones on this device, which 
It's a TV out macro. I suppose there's really no point in using headphones on it. Um, then, yeah, you'll only have one channel. Uh, in fact, you'll only have one earbud working even. You won't even have both earbuds. But I guess you don't have to install the TV out if you're not doing uh, TV out, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of interesting when you have the uh, screen swapping on for Game Boy Advance. Um, it's almost actually an argument to turn it to top screen only so that you're not ha so you don't have the internal screen lit up. Actually, let's do that right now. We'll try it out. Set that to top screen. I'm so used to setting it to bottom screen because why wouldn't you? Oh, but I think I know a problem with that. Hang on. I forgot to put the card in. Yep, the backlight shuts off. And so swapping this means we can't see it. So yeah, you do want that always on the bottom. That's a bummer. I mean, unless you'll literally never use it unless it's plugged into a TV. In that case, I could see that argument. I am going to check the aspect ratio on this because I don't... I'm not doing any corrections, so I don't know how off that is. That doesn't look off. That doesn't look off at all. In fact, I hate to say it, but this kind of looks better than the uh, actual Game Boy Advance TV out options. I mean, we're still dealing with composite here. But all the downsides. But, it is looking pretty good. And I have this plugged into a um, RetroTINK 5X Pro, which, huge shout out to buddy, my buddy Mike for letting me borrow it. Um, and I think that is doing the composite lots of favors, but I still have it hooked up to a cheap HDMI capture card. And beyond the capture card, you know, it's still composite. Uh-oh. That's not supposed to happen. Alright, well, let's try another game. I don't have anything good on here, do I? Oh no, I have tons of stuff. My younger days. Man, that's so cool.
One thing, I suppose the touchscreen games are gonna kind of suck. Because you either gotta get used to just, you know, eyeballing it and playing with the main screen on the big screen, or you're still basically playing handheld. Because this game, there's like nothing going on on the top screen. And all of the action is on the bottom. Which, we can swap the screens. But... As you can see, this has gotten harder. But I'm not really selling that, am I? Because <laughs> now I have to look over at a different screen. doable. I'll give you that. Alright, well, there's no sense in me sitting through and playing this whole game. Um, this is cool. I'm digging it. Uh, the only, like, concern I have is that this, the TV out chip, or whatever this is doing, seems to put out a little bit of heat. Uh, that's probably not too great for battery life. I sincerely doubt it's enough heat to actually be concerned. Um, but heat means it's doing stuff. And because it's doing stuff, we know that means it's going to be taking up some battery. Uh, there's just nothing I can do to get this screen to not look like garbage is there. Well, it's a DS Lite. Uh, there's not much to be said. Um, this is actually really cool. So, in terms of TV out, as long as you just want GBA or as long as you're fine with slot 1 emulation on a flash card, I think this is actually a better option than one of the GBA TV out kits. It's a little bit pricier if you're just looking at the kit itself, but a broken DS Lite is still basically like five bucks. And barring water damage, these things are really hard to kill. Um, so making a macro, nine times out of ten it's the top screen that's dead, not the bottom one. The bottom one has an extra digitizer layer on it, and we don't have to deal with that flexible ribbon cable. So, yeah, it just tends to be more durable. Plus, the bottom's a lot thicker than the top, so flexing damage, you know. But anyway, DS lights are still a dime a dozen, and just based off the fact that the aspect ratio is... It's probably still a little bit off. Um, I, I'm, in, I'm impressed. I think this is the better experience. Um, install, I, I think, still needs a little bit of work. There's a lot of manual wiring. There's a lot of cutting things to get them to fit. It's a little tedious, but it's really not difficult. This is... I, I'm, I'm digging this, man. I don't... I don't know, like I've done the other Game Boy Advance TV out kits. But this appeals to me in a way that those don't, and I don't know why. Uh, I suppose we could still play Game Boy Color this way. I don't remember where I have them saved. GB backup, that's it. We can see it's on the bottom screen here, but there's no reason I can't just swap those.
It's a little choppy, but I think that's honestly just my capture. I don't recall DS Lite lagging at Game Boy Color emulation. Yeah, you know what? This is it, man. I think one interesting thing to see would be higher video quality. Now, I don't know if that's feasible using the DS Lights encoder. I think we'd have to combine this function with um, extra hardware to get anything higher quality. Because I know the chip itself is built with composite out functionality. I don't know 100% what the board we installed does aside from letting us use the regular button inputs. I don't know specifically what that's doing. I think that's an audio amp. Uh, both preamp for... Well, no, it couldn't be because that's not even hooked up to the output. I guess it's just an amp. I, I don't know. I can't speculate. Either way, I'm fairly certain that the DS Lite is outputting the composite signal itself. And to get any higher quality out of that, we'd have to switch back to the regular LCD and then convert it with some FPGA type magic. Um, so that being said, with this particular method, I don't think anything better than composite is in the cards. But you also got to think back to when this thing came out, which was 2006, give or take. The original DS was 05. And yeah, this was a year later, 2006. This was built back in 2006 when Composite was the common uh, exit. Oh, I thought that was exiting the... Uh... Well, it froze again. That's nice. Um, yeah, back in 2006 when Composite was common, we were just, just switching over to HD with um, the Xbox 360 and PS3. And so... Most people were still on composite. And for Nintendo, I think I think at this point it's obvious that if nothing else, they would rather stick with tried and true technology rather than going with bleeding edge stuff. And that tends to work out with for them. So composite makes perfect sense in this case. Uh even though it's a little bit harder to deal with in the modern day. Come on. My L button has gone back to, to not working. Oh, and I can't do anything about that. Well, there we go. Who the hell is Kenny? I'm going to stop playing that because otherwise I'm going to keep getting distracted and never going to finish this up. Um, so yeah, this thing is actually really, really cool. I, I'm i really impressed with what it can do. Um, I don't know what it is. I've never thought the DS was particularly comfortable, uh, DS Lite at least. I, I like the original DS a little bit better. The buttons on this always seem small. I was never fond of the never really fond of the hard edges that you're gripping, but I don't know. With that built-in DS Lite functionality and this board, this is this is a really cool device. This is going to be... This thing's going to live on my desk for a while, I think. Um, get, some, get some cool games running on it. Uh, I will probably make more videos down the line to revisit this because I still have to fix the uh, charge port. It works, but... Oh, now it's working fine. Go figure. Um, well, if nothing else, I will have to do something about the speaker because this is not the best way to treat a speaker. I really thought my earpiece speaker was going to fit, but it's a little bit too wide. I'll have to find something a little bit smaller. Um, and I think we can do some more case mods to this thing. I think it'll be good. I think, 
think we haven't seen the last of this. All right. So let's... I, I, I think I've already started mentioning most of this before, but I'm going to go over this again. This was the DS Lite TV outboard from Rotronics, and I, I'm really digging it. The install is a little bit complicated. Uh, first, you have to get the software set up on the DS Lite, and that makes part of one of the, the prerequisite for getting the TV out functionality working means you no longer will have a top screen that works. It's just there's no easy way to trigger back and forth as of this moment. Uh, I don't know if that's in the game plan. I know I originally talked to these guys who were working on this uh, back when they first unveiled it, and th they mentioned to me that it was in the game plan to get a patch onto the system itself so you don't have to keep running software every time it starts up, and that indeed happened, but I haven't talked to them um, about finding if there's a way, you know, we could just hold the key combo on startup to disable TV out or to enable TV out. Uh, I think that would be really cool to have like a, a, a stealth DS, um, one that is fully functional because we can fit the board much easier up top than we can down bottom and then just run a few extra wires. You know, I think, th I think that would be really neat, but I don't know if that's in the cards, but anyway, rambling. Um, Getting the software set up was actually really easy. You just gotta run the FlashMe installer, and then once you have FlashMe, you can dump your firmware, patch it, and then flash that patched firmware instead. FlashMe is a requirement. You have to use that specific version of FlashMe just because of how the patch works. Um, if you're worried about keeping your DS mostly stocked, well then don't do a TV out mod because that patch is required. Uh, if you ever need to roll your DS back so you can use two screens, it's just a matter of running the FlashMe installer again or restoring the backup, but the FlashMe installer should work either way. Uh, it turns out with DS consoles, in pretty much every case you can go up with firmware, but you can't go back. So it should work as long as you're using at least V8 and that's what the FlashMe is. Uh, but anyway, once you got the software set up, even if you wanted to skip that, you can just purchase one of those extra uh, wireless cards, and they come pre-flashed with the uh, TV out patch enabled. Um, once that, you just gotta cram that board in. There's quite a bit of soldering. It's all very straightforward, but it requires quite a bit of planning to get all the wires routed. But it's actually really easy. The, the hardest part about the wiring was probably getting those traces cut down by the uh, headphone jack to get the video out signal a place to route and to reroute the audio for mono instead of stereo. That was probably the hardest part, but only because I was cutting with a knife and I didn't have it secured very well. It would have made more sense to leave it in the shell while I was cutting so it had more support, but it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, it was it was all real. It, it was an easy, a surprisingly easy install. Um, getting everything to fit, of course, you know you gotta. It it'll go together. You just have to get every piece into place, and then once that's all in place, it just it just screws together. You can't even tell from the outside, aside from the fact. I still have a little bit of bulge over here that might. Might be able to be resolved with a little bit more cutting. Uh, but of course, this is also where we have that unused screw post. Uh, but I don't know. I, I'm i I'm jazzed about this thing. I, I think it's going to make me play a little bit more than I usually play, which I think is an excellent thing. I'm stoked for that. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'll have to revisit this at some point to get the speaker going. If you're building a DS primarily for TV out, then there's no point in even bothering with the speaker because you're going to have it plugged in the whole time anyway. And your speaker won't work. You'll have to use the TV out. But yeah, no, this is... I, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm impressed that that huge board fits with such little cutting. 
Like, yeah, we sacrificed our stylist silo, but yeah, I don't know, man. I think that's it. Um, thanks again to Rotronics for sending this my way to check out. Really cool of you. really cool kit. I'm really impressed with what you're doing. Um, check out the uh, description. There will be more details, more links. Um, I'll link straight to Rotronics' guide if that's if you're like a picture follower, it probably makes more sense to follow along with their picture guide than, you know, to take my guide and keep pausing and go, okay, what do we do next? What do we do next? What do we do next? Um, you know, just, I can give you the overview and then they can give you the specifics. Their guide is actually really well done. Uh, the only part where I struggled was, um, I misunderstood what they were saying about the select button needs a capacitor in line. They were saying just the select button. I thought they were trying to say every button and that didn't make sense to me, but overall, very solid. Um, I suppose we also could have just left the speaker there. That would have fit, that would have fit. Um, but anyway, would I, would I buy one of these? If, if I had a TV that could actually accept a composite output, I think I'd be pretty interested in this. Uh, the video quality is basically stock Game Boy Player. You're not going to get much better than this uh, because to get anything other than composite out on a GameCube, you have to start modifying the console or spend a ridiculous amount for component cables. Um, and then everything else is either composite hard mods, hard you know, hip, not not hard as in difficult, even though some of them probably are pretty difficult, but I mean like hardware mods uh, for HDMI, like the GBA HD, Woozles Consolizer, stuff like that. that I, this is, this is good, man. I'm digging it. I don't know what else to say. I'm, I'm jazzed to play with it a little bit more. I just got to put a little bit more effort into this casing. Uh figure out my speaker problem, what I want to do about that. And yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll play it. This is super cool. Anyway, that's all I've got. I'm going to cut off here and I will uh, catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching and thanks for bearing with me while I, I stumbled through this whole thing. That was, uh, my apologies. Some weekends are better than others, but anyway, Thanks for watching, guys.